I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my everyday life living in Nicaragua. Today we're going to do a little bit of a walk. My foot is still bothering me, but we're going to give it a try and see how far we can go. We're out at the north end of Ponaloya. This is a part of the beach that I actually can't remember if I've ever taken you guys out on a walk on. So we're going to show you guys around and just give you a little bit of a feel for what this remote but pretty busy and active uh, portion of the Ponaloya beach is. Now, Las Penitas is to the south down that way, which we show pretty often. We've covered that really well, and we've shown a bit of Ponaloya in the past, but I don't think we've come this far north. If we have, it's been a really long time. It's about time we showed again because a lot of things have changed. So we're going to head out and go for a walk right after the bump. All right, we're going to start pretty far north. You actually come to the Embarcadero. You go all the way north on the main road of Ponaloya, and then you turn to the right and come up the hill. So this is actually at the top of the hill. When we come back around, this actually has views of the ocean from there. And I've got a few houses. There's a few restaurants. There's, there's a number of things down that way, kind of down the hill, but uh, not a ton. This intersection is a little bit funky. And some, for some reason, it's really muddy today. But I was just in Las Penitas and it wasn't money. Now this complex on the right is really interesting. There's like houses inside in a really weird configuration behind this wall. I've never actually seen this before. I'm not 100% sure I've climbed this hill before. I, I've been in, in a car and this is open. There's like a whole complex in there, which is pretty interesting. So we're heading up the hill. Buenas tardes. This house on the right has had Maybe a lot of potential, but never got finished, it looks like. Very odd. Now, Ponaloya is dramatically the older beach compared to Las Finitas. This was a well-established beach for a very long time before anyone started really going to Las Finitas. So there's a lot more old structures that have been built up, run down, left to collapse. Of course, there's some everywhere. And then some new interesting stuff has happened in Ponaloya, and it's kind of up and coming again. There's a lot of potential down here, but you gotta be a little bit more creative in many cases. Hopefully in the video, you can see a little bit. That's the ocean on the horizon. And we have this really steep drop here going down to it. So this portion of Ponaloya is actually a really heavy rise uh, that you have to go up. It's quite a bit of elevation. Now this house on the right, I have no memory of having seen this. It's clearly not brand new, but I don't think it's very old. You can see there's a radio tower up there on this upper road. And this cute little doggy down here is watching me. You're so cute. But check out this house. They've got to have some amazing views. This has got to be one of the highest points in the village. We'll go ahead and check out this road, see if it takes us anywhere interesting. This has got a European vibe to it. Hi. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's skittish, but she came out to see me. Oh. This is not a style you'd expect to find in Nicaragua. And I definitely didn't know there was one like this in Ponaloya. We'll see it again when we return here. So you can kind of see from the road here, this is the highest point. It doesn't really go any higher. The house we just passed on the right and this ruins on the left. This is the highest ground anywhere around. And you can see some people on the path up there. Got a path going behind the house here and then these cool ruins here this is pretty neat I wonder what this used to be easily a hotel or something Oh, there goes a wild cat.
What a beautiful courtyard that must have been. You can see there used to be white tiles everywhere here. A little elevated patio back here. Now the jungle has come right up to here. There is a path here. Somebody's been using this to go somewhere. That's pretty cool. It's very muddy. I don't feel like exploring that at the moment. This is a pretty neat structure. Obviously totally useless now. But it's amazing how much some of these walls have, have held up. This must have been like a garage entrance or something, or some kind of big window. There's like a really big puddle, or maybe it's an old pool that is still kind of intact over there. This is still part of the original grounds that I'm walking on. All right. Oh yeah, that is a swimming pool that is still there. Whoa. Hope you guys can see this. I mean, you can see it, but I hope it is really visible. Wild. So whether this was an amazing house or an old hotel or something, someone put a lot of work into this, but this has been gone a long time. So other than, ooh, what am I stepping on? I almost fell over on something really unpleasant. That would have been so gross. And there's another big entrance way that would have gone to the same pool area, kind of more or less. These dogs are not happy that I'm here. They're like, that's our place. You're not allowed in there. All right, we're gonna go back. So this house is really cool. Oh, look at that dog way up on the tower. So adorable. So this is quite a big complex here. You can see. Hi. Hi, come here. <laughs> You're so cute. They have a beautiful top, top level up there. Everything's enclosed. That is really nice. My guess is that's just been here for about two years. This dog really wants to jump on me. He's like, you're too close. I don't know you. It's amazing in many ways coming over to Ponaloya because it's all really one beach. It's so silly that Ponaloya and Las Bonitas are two separate places, but they're totally different worlds. Hola! It gets dark and deep over here on the left. And then there's a little house, kind of modern. And on the right, it's just jungle. And this dog is following us. Hi, come here. Come here. Aww. We can see that structure we were just in came all the way over. This must be the other side of the pool right there. What a beautiful place that had to have been at one point. This place on the left is pretty cool. Their driveway goes down. They have a whole grounds, really nice foliage. This place, not too bad too. Got some neat stuff back here. And some of these have been around for a long time, but a lot of them are relatively new because people have gotten deals one of the places over here, I just saw someone painting it, has been for sale since, I'm going to guess, 2019, maybe 2020. It was one that I looked at online before we came here. Look at some of these old walls. And uh, they were asking some ridiculous price for it. And I came and looked at it on foot, and we were like, what? That is crazy. Check out this old fence. If you like old places, Punaloya has got them. That is the ocean, the beach. You can see the waves out there. It's kind of a neat old spot here. What is there, this? Hola. <laughs> this is interesting. 
someone built a wall with two patios and nothing else, no rooms. They're on the left. And then here on the right, we have another little access road. Like seriously, Punaloy is so wild. Access road, going where? No one knows. But here, another ruins. So it's probably just a house, but it's just some moss covered bricks left. Everything that was really there is kind of gone. But a good number of people live over here in Punaloya. It's not like it's abandoned from a people perspective. Here's a road going down, and there you can see the ocean a lot better as we open up. We're going to continue on this road a little bit. And we got a car working its way through. So it's interesting that Punaloya and Las Bonitas are, for all intents and purposes, a single beach. But in practical terms, they are a world apart. This is the school bus actually coming by. And uh, it is a cultural difference, a lifestyle difference, a tourism difference, a restaurant difference, absolutely everything is different. Why is that this? Between the two locations. Like there's so little similar between them. And both have some ruins, both have some old stuff, both have some new stuff. But the styles, the layout, everything about the two are just absolutely different. If you didn't know they connected, you'd you'd really never guess because there's so little similar between them. But Punaloya actually has the bigger population. But where are they? Just kind of hidden all over. I've definitely never been where we are now. And now the road is going to go down significantly. Ooh, what do we have on the right there? We've discovered yet another something really interesting. Now for practical purposes, we're on a peninsula which throws people off. It's hard to figure out the landscape. I encourage you to bring up a map of Ponloy and poke around as I do this. It's a tiny area, but it's really interesting. So these steps must have gone up to a hotel or a really nice house once upon a time. The spot is beautiful, and these rocks and everything are really cool. And then across the way, it drops off fast. And once again, there's nothing, but we're right on the ocean. Like that's water right there. So many things abandoned in a place so beautiful. And obviously it's super quiet, like there's nothing going on. Now we're only at the extreme northern end of Ponaloya. Most of Ponaloya, like Las Bonitas, is one long straight road. Uh, but it, the way that it comes up, I've got a plant underneath my shoe. Hold on, I'm trying to fix that. There we go, it's a little bit better. So a lot of the main beach is quite similar, but when you get up to this end near the estuary on the peninsular part with the hill in the middle, it is just so wildly different. And there is a hill that separates the two beaches. Now off to the right, we got some houses and some stuff going on. We're not gonna head that way though, we're gonna go down to the left. Here we got a puppy. All right, that place looks like an old place that it currently maybe is has, having some work done. It's hard to say. We've got a chicken over here, and the school bus is coming back. Apparently that was not a way to continue. We're going to find out where it goes. It is not easy to get around out here in Ponaloya. I don't know if you can see on the film just how bad these roads are, but it is bad. <laughs> the chicken goes running. But like, these are deep ruts, big rocks. Whoa and you're almost fall over walking all the time. Oh, and this little car is coming. This is very foolish. We'll watch him go by. Oh, there's a red gate across the way. The thing is, is all these like little gates go into this wilderness area that's just in the middle of the peninsula. It's only the space of, I don't know, maybe a maximum of eight houses, maybe less.
Buena suerte. <laughs> they fit. They're okay. <laughs> this car is for sale in case you want one. It fits, but ooh, this is bad. This So this is why. It's roads like this. You don't run into these most places, right? But there's some cool places like Ponaloya you might want to go. And this is why people say getting a 4x4, a Hilux, or something like that can be worthwhile. You can see the clearance on their car. They made it, but it was really close. It's easy to end up hitting the rocks on the bottom. It's easy to get hung up because these roads are not maintained. Now, there's very little reason you would need to drive out to a place like this. You could park where I did, which was nice and clear, and, uh, and I just walked here. So that's fine. All right, you have that option. But, okay, so here on the left, if we actually go in here, we're right at the water. So let's take a peek through this. A lot of chickens on the right. All right, so this is clearly the estuary. So this is, ooh, something, something was right there. So here, I'm not gonna go down there because of the mud. You can see when the water comes up, there's boats up here. There's some old rundown stuff down there, but there's people. So this is the estuary on the Ponaloya side. We've done a lot of filming of the estuary on the Las Panitas side. These are two different estuaries. They're not the same one, but they are very similar. And the two beaches are bounded by them. So there's an estuary on the north side, locking in Ponaloya, and an estuary on the south side, locking in Las Panitas. And on the far side of the estuary is Las Brasiles, here, which is where Surfing Turtle is, way out there through the jungle. Look at that surf pounding over there, because that's the open ocean, but then it hits this huge sandy area that is currently exposed. You can walk across this, some people do. If you've seen videos, if you look up my videos from the Surfing Turtle, all of this was underwater and we went across it in a speedboat. All depends on the tide. When the tide is like this, it's very hard to get to and from. And if you're at Los Brasiles, it's easy to get stuck over there until the tide comes back. What a beautiful, peaceful area though. But as you can imagine, living out here has its challenges. Very little infrastructure and the roads are terrible. And uh, you're pretty isolated. We are going to show some restaurants. You're you're not without restaurants, uh, but it's very different than Las Panitas. Uh, it's a different vibe completely. But we will check it out. I think you'll find it interesting. Now, unlike Las Panitas, which essentially retains a beach town vibe throughout the entire thing. Now, when you get down to the estuary itself and you go around the estuary, there are a few places where the fishermen put in boats. That is true. But at no point along the beach do you feel like you're in a fishing village. You always feel like you're in a tourist beach. But in Ponaloya, it always has a, a very old vibe. And when you get down to the estuary area, it feels like a fishing village and tourism completely drops off. Buenas. Buenas tardes. All right. I think we're pushing towards the very end of the road. We you can see what looks like people way out there. Should be interesting. Now, this looks like there's some spots where some new things may be going on. I'm not sure if they're repairs or completely new construction, but it's interesting. Now, this one on the right, very small, but there's a cat in there checking us out. Got some uh, neat stuff down here. But this is a lot of new work. That looks like a whole new house there. If you're okay with remote opportunities everywhere in Nicaragua, 
You can always make a beautiful place anywhere that your heart desires. Buenas! All right, this is it. This is where the road literally peters out into the estuary. And there is nothing. Nothing! Now this place on the right... Looks like we got a restaurant without a name. Or just a really cool house. Buenas! Can't tell if that's a business that is quite small or a house that is really epic. House, I think. Oh, look at the little puppy. Hi! Oh, I scared him. I scared him. So, if we look over here to the left, there's water. Right, you can see the boat and there's shiny water just beyond it. That is the estuary coming in. We're going to head up this way. This is actually really cool. And as I'm walking along, there's no way you guys can see this on the video. There are itty bitty crabs everywhere. But this is super cool to be out here. I've never come out here at such low tide that all of this just turned into a sand mound. Right in front of us, if you can see it, that is a sand island where trees, possibly mangroves, I think those are just trees, have taken root and hold the sand together. And so as the sand has come and gone, over the years it just keeps accumulating from the roots. So it's just getting more and more of an island, and the water goes around it almost like a split river. It's pretty interesting. And then the other bank, kind of the same thing is happening as where the trees are. You can see there's more stuff over there. You probably can only get there by boat or going way around. You can see the estuary wraps all the way around. Hopefully you can see it, that there is an edge all the way everywhere. And we're just on kind of a sand island. Obviously it's not really an island. I walked here without going over water, but this is a really interesting area that is sometimes underwater. But right now it's low tide. So we are protected. This is really, really cool. What a beautiful spot. Now you're going to find things like this a lot of this coast. Uh, another spot where you're going to find one that is very similar is in Salinas Grandes. On the north side of Salinas Grandes towards Las Finitas. The estuary does something similar. That one is the same estuary that is in Las Finitas, the San, or the, the Juan Venado estuary. This was not in my plans today when I said I was going to come out and grab some recording of Ponaloya. I was hoping to show some houses and restaurants and uh, I was not thinking about the estuary and abandoned ruins of hotels. So those are big wins. Hope you guys found, found that interesting. Check it out so that people are on a boat. This is kind of a launch. This is how you get over to the island. There's actually a bar somewhere on the other side on an island. There's signs for it. The owners have invited me out, but I literally don't know how you get there. And going out to islands is always, you know, kind of annoying. It's always super cool because like you're on an island, but it's also, there's always no one else there and you can't leave. <laughs> so at some point we got to go out there because that's pretty cool. But, but you gotta have free time. Oh, I think that's it. Look down there, there's a big structure with a boat. Because I'm pretty sure with this thing that that boat is going in front of is an island in the estuary. But a big one with so many trees that you're able to put buildings on it. Those are mangroves, by the way. Most of what you see over there is mangroves. That's really cool. And then check this out. It goes way out and around and then goes off that direction. So cool out here. It's amazing that there's so few people out here. It's so beautiful 
and serene and close to a lot of people. Really easy for people to come out and enjoy this. And it's free, obviously. Just a really cool spot. I don't know if they're fishing or what they're trying to do in those trees. All right. Well, this is just really cool, but I'm gonna turn off the camera for a minute, let it cool down. And uh, I'm gonna zip back so you don't have to walk all that way with me. But this is definitely a good win and something to consider. If you were interested in this area, Ponaloya as a place to most likely build a house rather than buy. There's not a lot to buy that you'd be really interested in, but there are a lot of old rundown places all along the beach and up here at the estuary area that uh, would be super cheap and you could tear them down if, if people are interested in selling and then you could build whatever you want, which is often the way to go, especially in these older towns. And this gives you an idea of what's out here. There's also the option to build over there. That's Los Brasiles over there. And uh, there are a few things over there. I know one of my viewers is building an eco village over there. It's a big area. It's not, it's not a tiny thing. It's a very large area along the estuary, but they're so isolated. They don't have internet running over there. They don't have power running over there. And they do have that pole that you see there, but that doesn't go all the way to the structures. That's just for that immediate stuff right there that you see. That has to be the bar that we're seeing through those trees. So, oh, check out the prints from the bird that walked along here. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, we're going to head back down this road here and uh, explore more of Ponaloya. All right, we're back where the rough road is. And I want to show this really run down wall and stuff over there, <laughs> which... If you were to live here, you would really want to fix this road, but it's kind of a cool location. Every place that's abandoned and run down is an opportunity to do something new and amazing and make a big difference in the local economy, even if local just means on the street or whatever. There are lots of opportunities to make a positive impact and uh, do something really interesting. All right, back up. It's always someone walking. All right, whoo, these are steeper hills than they look. That's a lot of mud. I'm gonna check the map and see if it's worth going down there. All right, the quick answer is no. If we kept going on that road, it would just wrap around the uh, against the estuary and it's really just a housing spot. For locals, sometime we'll do it, but not for a long time. So this is the next road up. We didn't go down this one. You can see it's just similar houses, estuary, and the open ocean. Once again, that's Los Brasiles across the way. So we are going to continue this way, heading back towards that high house with all the dogs, and go back pretty much heading towards all the restaurants so you can see the interesting bits. Now, supposedly, roads like this one cut across the peninsula and meet up with the wraparound road on the other side. There is a little bit of a community, very, very uh, rough area. Nothing to be scared of, obviously. Although these roads, I'm slipping every few steps. This is hard. Buenas. This is much easier when it's dry. But today is mostly pleasant weather. It's very humid but it's not warm at all. Got this cutie in the road again. Hi. Can I walk past y'all's house? There's three of them. They're a pack. They're a pack. All right, 
super cool house on the corner. Oh, check out the cat. Extra points if you can find the cat. All right, another side road, same drill, very steep, goes right down to the estuary. This one goes right where the estuary meets the ocean. Kind of hard to see. I don't think it's worth a walk down. I know you guys wish I would. These roads are steep, it is hot. Remember, I am babying my foot and I am feeling it. So we're not gonna do a lot of extra walkings. Go down in those comments, obviously. I'm not going to go do it right this second because I won't see the comments at least until tomorrow. I plan on posting this the same day. If you're watching this on the day it releases, chances are you're watching it on the day that I filmed it. I'm currently releasing same day. I try not to do that, but I am currently back at some of these interesting pre-existing houses. Oh, we have a better look at this one now. Look how big that is inside that complex. That is so interesting. What design choices they made. Very surprising at street level it looks completely different than it does up above that projecting area actually looks pretty decently modern there's a window missing that doesn't help but would not be out of place in a florida florida keys alabama all kinds of southern american spots here we're coming past this open gate once again rare chance to poke in and take a look they've got a lot back there multiple structures a high balcony area i'm sure they could get nice ocean views from there looks like a pool and stuff this tiny pulperia i don't know if this is still in business it doesn't look like it's still in business it doesn't look like it i think its roof has collapsed in so i'm pretty sure that's just a decrepit old building but it's very cool looking right like i kind of want to get a photo of it i'm gonna stop and take a photograph what do you think all right photograph taken interesting walled house there there's the sign pointing to the directions here is the sign pointing to the mangrove island isla manglares uh place that i'm pretty sure we saw but i don't know how to get to and uh i literally i've been invited there by the owner but i literally don't know how to go and actually get there i mean we just walked to where you would go it's not like there's a sign or a boat or instructions or a person to take you I'm sure I could ask. I'm sure I could find a way, but okay. So we're coming back to the paved road. So that is the road coming in from Las Penitas and off to the right is where we're going to go to go get to the restaurants. This place in the past has been a taco place. I assume it still is just not open right now. They're cooking right there. Hola. All right. Here we'll get some views of the ocean. Buenas tardes. Now this area, as you come down, even though it's paved, seems all run down like other areas we've been, and it is for just the littlest bit. And you can see like old signs for things that don't exist, abandoned buildings, old walls. Now, honestly, the moss on these is super cool. And the green area behind it, beautiful. You could have a beautiful house in there or something, but, and this is propped up, there's a, wood log holding this wall up it looks like this is actually for sale 88195101 but that's probably a decade old but this is pretty cool like you can see through there i hope how green all this is comes out on the video because this is so green so there's some neat spots here and pretty much starting with this one on the right they start getting pretty cool but it's a tiny area, so don't get your hopes up that there's a ton of neat stuff. It's a limited amount of space. Over on the left, it's kind of turned into an orchard area. Just an FYI, I assume it's part of the same thing with the wall, but who knows. Now, this road probably goes over and joins the last one that we pointed to, but I can't say that I've actually seen that to be sure. If you go back there, there are some more houses and stuff back there, and you can see on the right, just past the blue with the white 
uh, barbed wire. There's another place that looks like it's probably pretty decent, but muddy roads and my foot hurts. So we're not going to go back there today. Again, get down those comments. So this is stuff you guys want to see you're interested in specifically. Yes, I can come back when my foot doesn't hurt and it's a dry day and we can dig into it. This little place on the right, tiny structure, but really cute. There's lots of good shrubbery with two little things with a shared roof. Like it's just interesting and cute. I wouldn't want to live there, but if it was like my cottage for the weekend, you know, I'd be like, oh, this is the place where we change our clothes and store our bags when we're hanging out on the beach for the day. Yeah, totally. And it has a bed you could crash in it. Okay, that's cool. Now, this spot is used as parking, private parking hotel parking for the restaurant El Nica Libre, which is this blue building directly in front of us. I've actually never eaten here and I feel really ashamed about that, uh, but I need to. It's a French place and it's supposed to be pretty good. Now this blue place on the right with the tower, interesting, interesting house, beautiful driveway, nice pool in front. It's an old fashioned Central American design, but really well done and interesting with a good size house and a multi-level livable tower observation deck really neat now from here on it's all parking and restaurants so it gets busy suddenly starting with el nica libre here on the left and if we get a view into it as we go by you're going to notice that it's it's like a, a nice fancy restaurant it's got a full indoor dining room tiled views of the ocean and every single thing on the left is now going to be one restaurant after another now most of them are going to be very cookie cutter it is all ranchos as we call them and a lot of them even have in the name and it's all uh traditional nicaraguan fare there is a place on the right here just showing you a little bit and a little bit of parking. You can see some of the buildings. That is the high balcony area we saw from the other road right there. So we haven't gone very far. It's all very small. So there's another place. Right now we're in the off season. So there's a few people. Things are open, but it's basically the same food place after place. Every place has just a few people in it. However, this one we're coming by. Hopefully the noise isn't too loud to cause problem. This is the brand new... Uh, crab bar and it is completely new the whole thing is new i've not been in there yet i just found out about it and they got this big crab on a rock and uh, it's supposed to be pretty cool so that's getting a lot of traffic here just because it is the hot new thing and it's a brand new structure which never happens in in Pono Hola. <laughs> so to have a place in Ponaloya that's getting brand new construction is a really big deal. Now this one on the left is the Salvadoreño. That's a rare Salvadoran restaurant here in Nicaragua. They exist, but to get one out on the beach, very rare. This is Chepe's Bar on the left. Hola! This is a really well-known location. This is the Aladaria, a little ice cream place closed right now, but an ice cream shop on the right. They do have a very cute garden. And we're coming down to the very last place, the Bar Margarita. This marks the end of the strip of bar. So not very big. The whole thing is very small. But a couple nice places. If you're looking for real, old-fashioned, nice Nicaraguan beach bar vibes, Ponaloya has it. They do it really well with Margarita here. This is Chepe's. Hola! Chepe's there. And from here, you can catch the launches when it's high tide. Obviously, this is low tide, so you can't do it now. This is Los Brasiles over on the right. So this is where you can catch a water taxi that takes you over to the island. You can see there's a lot of people out here. Uh, they're probably crabbing. And uh, over across there is where, all the way across, it's very hard to see because there is a high sand island in the middle. Uh, way over there is where we got the horse-drawn carriages that take us out to the surfing turtle a couple years ago. Uh, when we were checking that out and here you can see we're going to come out a little bit so you can see where we are and chase this little bird i'm going to try not to get super wet i am not in sandals i'm in shoes all right i'm not going to try crossing this part but this is part's okay all right okay as we come around you can see all the shacks out there you can see down there is where the road turns up and comes up here and then this is all lively along here and uh these are some of the the big places that's the crab bar all lively right there with the high roof right at the end and then several places lots of seating lots of capacity out here i've never seen these full even when this because there's just there's not enough parking there's no way to get enough people to fill all these places but it's a really cool area now, when we were out for our walk, 
This is obviously the estuary. So we were just straight down there in front and then went around the corner that way. That's where we were. And uh, so Pomalaya does have a ton of these traditional restaurants, but what there is almost none of is hotels. So staying in Ponaloya is a real challenge. Uh, there are some hotels in Las Penitas, but even there, there's only so many. The selection is actually quite small, but Las Penitas has several, and Ponaloya has just a handful, and they're all very small, like Nica Libre. So having capacity for a lot of visitors is a little bit difficult. Like that's just, but the idea here, this is a day beach. People come out here just for the day from mostly Leon and to some degree Managua and a tiny degree Chinandega. And you come out and you hang out for the day. So breakfast out here, not very popular. Lunch is huge, dinner is moderate, and then people head back. And that is, hola. <laughs> that is the lay of the land in Ponalaya but definitely plenty to do. Nice spots. Some of these places are well known for their food, some for the party. And there is this road. There's, I mean, you kind of just park along the roads. You can go down here. There is a little bit more here. And this would be a popular place if you can get a house down here because you're so close to the restaurants, but it would be loud because a lot of music all the time, but it's not terrible. Over on the left, we have another place that is completely gone. There's nothing left of this, but it's amazing how well painted the Coca-Cola is on a wall that is otherwise completely gone. And uh, we've got a lot of mucky water to cross here. As uh, the estuary again on the left. And there's a big gated place. You can see it there at the big white gate. Here is where another road came down that we walked past. This is where you would have ended up. The yellow house there, not too bad. Now, a number of years ago, we tried to come down here and look at houses. It was hard to navigate. And uh, the person showing us was never able to find the exact house to look at, but we ended up in the city instead. And uh, I've never lived in Ponaloya, but I know several people who have. It definitely has a complete character of its own and uh, its own vibe and pretty cool. So thanks for joining me. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support the channel and help make it possible for me to come out and do these kinds of things, then check out the link to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. It's a great way to make this show a priority. And uh, of course we have a membership for people who really are interested in, in getting an extra voice and getting to hang out a lot more. We have a private group just for the members to be able to chat and discuss channel issues and such. But I really appreciate all you guys watching. Sorry, I'm whew, kind of a kind of warm mess, but my foot held up okay, but I'm definitely ready to be done with it. I have walked for 1.6 miles, not a lot, but you know, it's enough for the first time on the foot. Hope you guys enjoyed today's walk. Again, get in those comments. Let me know what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like, all that kind of stuff. I am seemingly able to walk, so I'll probably not walk tomorrow. Give the foot a day to rest and, and test things out, but looking good. And I will see all of you tomorrow.